welcome to the hard sell where the stick in the swill bucket rattles back. You probably noticed that it's Olympics time again. It comes around sooner every time, especially when there's a plague knocking out of sync. Patrons will be getting this episode on the day of the opening ceremony, which this year involves a logistical nightmare of several dozen boats going down the Seine instead of a stadium-based show, because the host city is Paris and therefore they have to do everything in a unique and impossibly difficult and complicated way because they're French. Look, I love the French, but they really do like to be difficult and complicated. They just do. It's a thing. Consequently, the opening ceremony will either be an unprecedented spectacle, outdoing even London 2012, which, let's face it, is the real motivation here, or a historic disaster. If you're not a patron, it's a week later and you already know the answer. So Paris 2024 is upon us. And having done an Olympic episode already, here's the link, I wasn't going to do another one for this year, but then I discovered this. Yes, that's the Olympics on the cover of the TV Times. And if you're British, it probably feels pretty wrong seeing the games on ITV, let alone Channel 4, which also showed it that year and that year alone. The games have always been on the BBC, of course, just as long as there's been one. But it was a brief period where the rights were shared, just like football tournaments. Well, not quite like football tournaments, because it was tilted highly in favour of the BBC most times. Munich 1972 was the first to appear on ITV, but only in the form of evening highlights, and obviously appalled news coverage. Barely anyone noticed, so they skipped Montreal 1976. The 1980 games in Moscow were obviously a mess, with half the world boycotting it, and the BBC didn't or possibly weren't allowed to go to as much effort as usual, so for perhaps the only time the coverage there was practically 50-50. Union issues and airtime disputes with TVAM got ITV to skip LA 1984, and then there was Seoul 1988, for which they roped in Channel 4 during its daytime hours. They really went all out with this one, at least presentation-wise, with a lavish logo and titles, a Simon May theme, and heavy promotion. only to be largely ignored by the viewing public in favour of the BBC again. At which point they gave up, and it's been BBC exclusive ever since, unless you feel like paying for Eurosport. But like I said, a definite effort was made in 1988, including this TV Times, all told the listings for 17th to the 23rd of September 1988, a relatively late start for the games due to the Korean climate. I happen to have a copy from the Anglia region for what it's worth, with all its adverts intact. So let's go through it now under the auspices of happiness in magazines. It's not like you have anything better to do. Of course, for all the banging on about the Olympics I just did, most of this episode's not actually going to have anything to do with them. Most of these adverts are just adverts. Then again, quite a few of them aren't. We won't see anything games-related for a while, though, as we're going through it from start to finish, like normal people. So the first advert is on the inside cover, and oh look, it's Elizabeth Taylor, not wanting to be outdone from beyond the grave by Richard Burton, who gets a corner of the cover because of an interview that week with his last wife. Here's his second and third, still hot at the age of 56, not that this image is any kind of objective measure, but she was. And she has a perfume now. Passion was quite a big thing when it was launched in 1987. These days we're accustomed to various toiletries named in honour of just about anyone who manages to stay reasonably famous for more than five minutes, from Ariana Grande to Sue Carpenter, probably. But when Taylor introduced hers, the only other star to have done something similar had been Sophia Loren. 
And between them, they probably opened the floodgates for that industry. So you know who to blame when you start seeing ghoulish posters for Futility by Cole Palmer. A couple of pages later, the inevitable, and far from only, cigarette advert. By 1988, these have been forced well down the road to abstraction, with direct allusions avoided, along with much or any text, with the result that, as a kid, I had no idea what these were saying. I knew there were cigarette adverts from the health warning at the bottom, but I had no idea how. They were like inscrutable surrealist dreamscapes in the middle of a magazine, refusing to give up their secrets. What kind of cigarettes were they even advertising? Of course, a five-year-old shouldn't be able to decode these, that's the whole point. And this one is, of course, for Benson and Hedges, with the cactus in the middle having the iconic gold boxes instead of spines. No undue attention is drawn to it, of course. Next up, the most exciting thing I've ever put on this programme in over a decade. Check out a loan with this subsidiary of Lloyd's Bank. Here's a very sensible advert explaining carefully why this is a good idea. It does and does nothing of interest whatsoever. There's a lot of pages in this magazine. Let's move on. Page 11, for instance, is a very harrowing page in general. There's a back third of an article about HRT, in which we're invited to contemplate the sex life of these people. And then a half-page advert centred around everyday farting dilemmas. A very English approach to this delicate subject, really, with a time-style cartoon from Paul Hampson. No punchline to speak of, but that's trap wind for you. And there's the discreetly punning name and elegant logo of the product itself. In fact, even wind cheaters might have been a little too on the nose for polite British society, because the name didn't last long as against essentially meaningless words like Rennie and Gavascon. More cigarettes, two pages later, and this one's much more straightforward. In fact, it's practically a normal advert, like you'd see for a normal thing, with a headline and everything. There's no reason they couldn't do this, of course. They could show the packaging as big as they liked, the size of an Egyptian pyramid, even, as long as it was in a neutral or abstract space, with no one actually seen to be smoking, and as long as they didn't ever say anything specific about the product itself. Which this one doesn't. Only that it's 6p off ain't that good value, in a general sort of sense. Overleaf, our first allusion to the Olympics. 1988 wasn't the first VHS Olympics per se, by any means, but it was for a lot of people, as the technology was exponentially more widespread now than it had been four years earlier. By now it was even in reach of poor people like my family. We finally got one a year later. So it made sense that the various blank tape companies were jostling for attention amidst a major sporting event, even though these cassettes were much of a muchness, really. We'll get a rebuttal later, but first, here's a brief message from TDK. The IOC are so precious about their imagery, including the torch, that TDK actually probably wouldn't be allowed to do this in this day and age. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but do bear in mind, even Chicago's actual bid for the actual Olympics wasn't allowed to use a torch in its logo. Next, Classy T. No, not Twining's, not that classy. Just Tetley, and their attempt to compete on that sort of level, with Tetley Gold. The finest teas from Africa and Asia and all that good stuff, drunk by sophisticated women in massive hats at round tables amidst honey-coloured, heavy-shadowed lighting, with not a single animated prole to be seen. This is well outside the tea folk stamping ground. This is hardcore. Even the free giveaways are classy and grown up. No cheap mugs or coasters here. Instead, baby's first filofax. This is tea for people of consequence. And this is what people of consequence looked like in 1988. Or what we wanted them to look like anyway. Over the page by Mark contrasts some definite probate with W.H. Smith Music Direct. Lots of lovely albums for you to purchase at a great discount. Just pick a few, sign up to the club, and then you belong to us, sunshine. A new catalogue every month, including an album of the month, which we will send you whether you like it or not, unless you send us a form opting you out for the price of a first-class stamp. But do bear in mind that if you don't buy at least six things at full price in the first six months, 
will break your thumbs. Talking of belonging to a company for the rest of your life, that's the premise of this TSB advert. What the tarot has to do with it, I don't know, but the copy positively encourages you to give up. You'll need to sign up to some bank eventually, and they'll basically own you body and soul ever since. So it might as well be a relatively benevolent one like us. They're not even wrong, really. Except at the end, when they say, think of TSB as the bank of the future. It spends the 90s slowly drowning before merging with Lloyd's. Back now, of course, or the name is at least, but it might as well not be. More vaguely threatening financial business, courtesy of insurance company General Accident, three pages later. They've got a fun highway code activity to try. In fact, it's a competition. You could win a car, or two and a half grand, or a copy of a road safety booklet. And they've teamed up with the Department of Transport for this. So it's probably your taxes paying for those prizes, if you're the kind of person that matters to. It's such a serious thing, it has to overspill onto the next page with the rules, underneath the jolly cartoon mask on that never really caught on. And this overspill prompts me to also call your attention to this cartoon on the letters page. It's not important, it's just that I noticed it, and I can't unnotice it. And I'm going to inflict it on you, because I can, because I'm a sick bastard. Hits a bit differently these days, doesn't it? OK, that was disturbing and a bit depressing. Let's move on. The next advert is for Heat Electric and will probably get me banned from YouTube. See? Look, it's a real advert that actually ran in the middle of the TV times in 1988. It's not my fault. Total heating was a new notion being used to promote electric boilers at the time, as an advance on central heating, with those three red stripes flowing through the house, keeping it 100% warm forever as long as you paid the bills. Here we see it applies to water as well, with some naked children, published right in the middle of a major child abuse scare. Oh well. Let's move on before someone burns my house down. Are you a serp? Am I a what? Are you a serp? Well, if it's not a personal question... Well, it's hard to say. A serp would appear to be some sort of pterodactyl person with extremely bad luck at digging holes. This is all largely over my head, which is probably why I'll starve to death once I reach retirement age. The next advert of interest is a few pages later, and another double-page spread. Naked ladies make everything better, as everyone knows, so here's a soapy Cleopatra in the bath. Except it's not the bath, it's a cake of soap. And she's actually kind of trapped in it or possibly emerging from it in some way. Either way, I'm not entirely sure where the bottom half of her is. I don't think the visual metaphor really comes off, but you get what they're going for, probably. This is luxurious soap, possibly made of ass's milk. Luxuriously creamy, exotically scented Cleopatra beauty soap, still available now, apparently, particularly popular in the Middle East, which is appropriate, I suppose. Next, scotch. Might be Olympics fortnight, but it's also autumn. Nights are drawing in, and darkness and cold are encroaching. Besides, Christmas is just a few more times over the horizon. Please consider the famous grouse. Look at that Roger MacPhail painting in its thick gold frame in some extremely legit man's oak-panelled study. Class. Still, the grouse would enjoy its greatest success in the 90s when the adverts were more playful and less for people better than you. And now, if we could be serious for a moment, cancer. Bowel cancer. A pretty common sort, sadly. I've lost family members to it. Here's a message about it from the Imperial Cancer Research Fund, which later formed Cancer Research UK, and remained dedicated to punching the bastard disease right in the balls to this day. Cancer-detecting toilet paper doesn't appear to have become a thing, though. They did get them to print the symptoms on the toilet roll packaging. 
And frankly, it's a good idea if you're over 40 to just have a colonoscopy and have done with it. It does involve a certain amount of faffing around, not to mention hunger, but it's worth it. Over the page, flooring endorsed by Eugenie Inesco. Intellectual humour. Rhino floors are presumably so named because they're so tough. They're vinyl. So sadly, it's not a brilliant piece of wordplay about rhino lino. Instead, the punning is visual and based around the concept of the world's smartest rhinoceros, who still isn't that clever or he'd have figured out a more practical solution to reading, not to mention his eyesight. Five pages later, as promised, an Olympic imagery heavy ad for more blank tape. This time they've really gone hog wild with pictures of spectators and torches and the Olympic rings, albeit only in the ITV logo, because Fujifilm here are actually partnered up with Thames, the company providing ITV and Channel 4's pictures for the event. Thames are proudly using exclusively Fuji brand VT to do so, and presumably for that reason, you should do the same at home with your VCR. It's as good a reason as any, really. You even get a free poster. And the games continue with a four-pager from Panasonic, because they're an official partner, which means they get to use the Olympic logo in full colour like they mean it. But what the hell is that thing? A timer? A barcode scanner? Right second time, it's a barcode scanner. People of a certain age might remember the radio and TV times briefly displaying little barcodes underneath some of the listings, and this is why. Someone's brilliant idea for making VHS more convenient. Panasonic have gone so far as to give you the barcodes for the entire Olympic Games coverage, on ITV and Channel 4 at least, on a handy-dandy pull-out-and-lose double-page spread. Possibly it'll do the same in the radio times with the BBC coverage, but I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't long before someone invented Video Plus, which didn't require a scanner and just involved putting in some random numbers, which were easier to print, and this fiddly system died a death. Still, it seemed cool and futuristic in 1988, I expect, to someone. We end this special feature with a straightforward advert for some makes of VCR, which is pretty unremarkable except for the innuendo at the start of the copy. Stop saying stroke and referring to Fatima Whitbread's javelin. A few pages later, there's an advert reassuring women they can still be hot over the age of 40. Well, that's a relief. Empathy is the first shampoo created for the over 40s, although I don't know how that works, nor do I particularly care to. Let's just appreciate how the lady isn't psychotically photoshopped, since it's only 1988. Overleaf, living with Jessica makes it sound like some kind of bone condition, but it's actually the modern executive female label a good old CNA. Twirling her umbrella insouciantly in front of some despondent, out-of-focus businessmen, our model is wearing quite a nice jacket and skirt, although I'm not sure they work terribly well together. But then I know nothing. Set you back about 58 quid altogether, or 156 quid in today's money. And if that's too dear, well, that's what Clockhouse is for. And by Clockhouse, I mean Primark. Another double-page spread a couple of pages later. They did like using these to break up the listings pages. And it's Lloyd's Bank again, with a boring and obnoxious first-person story told by some yuppie twat. Classic Garden Path headline, although unfortunately the punchline is essentially the copy itself. Still, you don't have to read it. I mean, I don't recommend it. Pause it if you like, but you're not going to get much out of it. There is an amusing meta bit mentioning the TV ads with Nigel Havers, so there's that. Several pages later, once the listings are out of the way, no, it's not an advert for a car, it's for a chemist. Newmark. They stock all those things on the right there, but you could also win a mini Metro just by shopping there. So, best go to Boots instead for the time being, just to be on the safe side. One last Olympics mention from the official glucose supplement of the British Olympic team. The black and white half page is only enough for a nice pack shot, lame pun and basic details. And also the intriguing information about a special Dextrosol Olympic update service. 
where you presumably ring in to hear someone very slowly give basic news information at 36p a minute, in a year when there is comprehensive coverage on all four channels. Great idea, guys. Two pages later, Woolworths arrived to remind you it's school time again, possibly the most depressing time of year for anyone under 16, with an advert that feels vaguely like pornography for people who have sex with ring binders. I assume they exist. They always exist. Rubbers. Dividers. Rulers. Ball pens. Folders. Woolworths is stationary. Well, I should hope so. I don't want massive department stores wandering about the streets. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. That'll bite me. Over the page to Halifax with more money salad. I imagine that here in the thick of the yuppie era, this all meant something to more people than it would now. Pre recessions and a depression later, banks, and building societies in this case, don't advertise by assaulting you with pure numbers to quite this extent anymore. Not the regular high street ones, anyway. This one isn't a double page spread, it was just printed on to right angle, making it a chore to bother with and probably doing actual harm to sales. Great job! If you do bother to go to the extreme physical effort of rotating your TV times, you get a faintly troubling scenario about bitchy doors. Why they're by a pool, I don't know. I don't like the idea of my front door going on holiday. I'll get cold and people might wander in. I turned my TV times around for this. And now, pickling. This is Britain, so when we say pickles, we don't just mean gherkins, we mean pickled anythings. Onions, eggs, beets, random vegetables, carrots, potatoes, eyes. All in Sarsons, the leading British vinegar brand. To such an extent at that time, that the slogan explicitly ordered the public to make it a German-sized trademark. Didn't quite make it, though. And the company's Japanese now. But it is still the market leader now in a new distilled variety, which is better for eggs and such for reasons. It's the most delicious way of punching yourself in the stomach, probably. On the inside cover, one more cigarette advert. This one's so classy, even the health warning is coloured burgundy. It's a clever touch, actually, because at first glance you don't realise that's what it is. They've camouflaged it as a regular part of the image. You wonder what's so special about this cigarette that it doesn't have the big white box cuckolding the advert. And then you realise it does. They've just coloured it. But by then, it's too late, you're already looking and absorbing the brand name. Dunhill Cigarettes. Internationally recognised as the best cigarettes in the world. By who, you might ask? Shut up, that's who. We're all right. How about Dr. Hunter S. Thompson, for one? Not that they ever seem to seek his endorsement, for some reason. I'm sure the good doctor would have appreciated the sneaky advertising techniques, at least. Finally, on the back, as a rebuttal to the famous grouse, Bell's Scotch, with a collage of Scottish clichés that even STV might find a little on the nose. Leaping salmon, bunch of thistles... Rob Roy nestling alongside the works of Rab Burns, some twat with his bagpipes, Lockwater, and Mary Queen of Scots. He really did look a lot like her cousin. We get it, okay? It's Scottish. Oh, and a comp slip from Glen Eagles. Alex Salmon would ask him to dial it down. And that's it. That's the TV Times on the week the Olympics began in 1988. What a lot of money-related adverts. Savings and investments and pensions and loans and credit cards and who knows what else. You can tell we're in the yuppie era, even if the bottom's already fallen out after Black Monday. Everyone still wants to be an executive, or at least look like one, as with the Jessica advert. Even tea companies are giving away personal organisers as gifts. The Olympics still have their impact, though although not in the same way as now. Three quarters of the Olympic-related advertising here was based around the exciting and, more importantly, newly affordable world 
of VHS. Three kinds of obsolete these days, of course. At least none of the cigarette adverts were tied in with the games. They officially stopped doing that in uh, 1988, actually. Same year, ITV stopped bothering with the Olympics at all. Coincidence? Well, yes, of course it is. Enjoy your French games, everyone. sat through a Bob the Fish production. Nice! If you haven't already, you absolutely must check out bobthefish.org.uk. Literally hundreds more videos, not unlike that one, adding up to days worth of entertainment and all absolutely free. But if you're not a cold-hearted skinflint, you can always support us on Patreon. For as little as anything at all, you can make programs like the one you just watched possible in the first place and become eligible for bonus material such as glimpses of the book I'm writing about the BBC, monthly riffings on random commercial breaks, the complete archives of the angry political satire magazine Two Sons, and even the odd very occasional bonus video essay unavailable anywhere else. If nothing else, you should prevent me from starving and or freezing to death in the foreseeable future, so that'd be nice. No pressure or anything. BobTheFish.org.uk You make it what it is. Mm -hmm.